Welcome, pilgrims. Last episode, we made pilgrimages to places all around the world. But did you know there are holy places for you to visit right here in the Americas, maybe even in your state? Pilgrimages are times of prayer and opportunities to remember that we are pilgrims on this earth until we go to heaven, our true home. Hello, and welcome to Truth in the Heart. My name is Sister Amada Veritas from the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today, we are going to learn about pilgrimages right here in our own country and next door in Mexico. What better place to begin than with a place Our Lady visited? She even left us a reminder of this visit. We'll begin with the Queen of the Americas at the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. Once again, Sister Mary Joseph has gone before us to our pilgrimage destination, and we can expect a postcard reporting back on her experiences. Do you know the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe? You may be familiar with the picture. It is very popular. Oh, I think I just saw Sister Teresa Benedicta. Maybe she can help us tell the story about Our Lady of Guadalupe. Sister, come here. Hi, Sister. How Hi, are you? Hi, Sister. Good. How are you today? Great. Thank you. Good. Sister, I'm just telling our pilgrims about Our Lady of Guadalupe and thought you would like to tell us the story. Sure, Sister. One day, when a poor Native American named Juan Diego was on his way to Mass, he heard someone calling his name, Juanito, Juan Dieguito. This lovely voice, of course, was his Heavenly Mother, Mary. She wished him to go to the bishop to have a church built on the very hill where she stood. Despite Juan's tries, he was unable to convince the bishop of Mary's request. Mary really wanted her chapel, and so she gave Juan a miracle that would prove this to the bishop. She asked Juan Diego to pick some roses from the hill. Although it was the middle of winter, there were some beautiful roses growing there. Usually, those roses could only be found in Spain, where the bishop was from. Juan picked the roses and placed them in his tilma, a long garment that he wore. He showed the roses to the Blessed Mother. She arranged them carefully in his tilma, and Juan took the roses to the bishop. <gasps> then what happened? Well, Juan thought finding the rare roses in the middle of winter was the miracle, but it wasn't. The real miracle came when Juan Diego opened his tilma, and not only did the roses tumble out, but an image of Our Lady was on his tilma, just as she had appeared to Juan Diego. Immediately, the bishop fell to his knees. Wow, sister, thank you for sharing that story with us. What a great miracle. You will have to come back and visit us sometime. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you, sister. Thanks, sister. Bye. Today, pilgrims from all over the world come to visit our mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe. There are many pilgrims who come from far away some even walk the whole way. They know their mother is listening to their petitions and their prayers. Sometimes, on the eve of her feast day, pilgrims stay up all night to serenade their mother with tra traditional songs. Everything about the image is not only miraculous, but also meaningful. I will give you an example. Did you know that the image of Our Lady on the tilma shows that she is pregnant with Jesus? The black sash that Our Lady is wearing in the miraculous picture was a way women told everyone that they were expecting a child. Also, her eyes reflect Saint Juan Diego as she saw him. And her mantle, or cloak, has the stars that are seen from Mexico. Through this miraculous image, she was able to teach the Native Americans who were reluctant to convert to Christianity that she is their mother and not a stranger to them. She is standing on the crescent moon, a sign of one of their pagan gods. So they realized that this woman, though she seemed very humble, was more powerful than their former gods. She points the way to the one true God. Oh, I think I heard our first postcard. Let's check in with Sister Mary Joseph to see how her American pilgrimage is going. It says, Dear sister and viewers, I love Mexico. So many of Mary's children are here, where she came so long ago to show her love for the native people. But her love reaches so much further. She continues to speak to us today about the sanctity of life. She is the protectress of the unborn. 
Do any of you have little brothers or sisters still in your mother's womb? You could pray to Our Lady of Guadalupe for special protection over your sibling and all babies. Heart of Jesus, formed in the womb of the Virgin, have mercy on us. Sister Mary Joseph. Now it's time for our celestial stumper. Here is our celestial stumper. What is the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe? The answer is December 12th. This was the date that Juan Diego picked the roses on Tepeyac Hill and Our Lady's image appeared on his tilma. It's time to take a break, but when we come back, we will head to New York, New York. Hi, I'm glad to see you made it back. Are you ready to go to the Big Apple, the city that never sleeps, to New York, New York? Why are we going there? Well, to begin with, it is a great place for pilgrimage. One reason to take a pilgrimage is to offer thanks to God for every gift that he has given to us and to see examples of those people who responded to his gifts by living holy lives. There are many, many people who have gone before us as Catholics. Some of these people are well known to us because they are canonized saints. And then there are saints that we will only know once we get to heaven. But they lived in the faith and they passed it down to us, just as we live the faith now and will pass it on to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. As you know, one of the great parts of our country, the United States of America, is that she has many people from many different countries that have all moved here and now call America their home. Through the years, there have been many, many Catholics that have come from all over the world to live in a country where they can practice their faith without being persecuted. There are people in America from Mexico, Germany, Russia, Norway, Uganda, and many, many other countries. In the beginning of our country's history, many of these people came by ship and first stepped foot into the country in New York City. I am going to tell you a little bit about some early Catholics who came to America and we can visit on pilgrimage to give thanks for their great example. One group of people who came to the United States seeking opportunity was immigrants from the country of Ireland. Many Irish immigrants came to America in search of a place to practice their Catholic faith. Did you know the largest church in New York is named after a well-known Irish saint? It's St. Patrick. While we are in New York, we are going to visit St. Patrick's Cathedral. St. Patrick's Cathedral is huge. It rises high in the sky. St. Patrick is no stranger to going to live in a foreign land. Did you know he was actually born in Scotland? Do you know what? I think I have a little extra time today to take a side trip to Ireland to learn about St. Patrick. This is going to be good. Let's watch. Oh! Hot chocolate, my favorite. In ancient times, the land of Ireland was in the dark grip of paganism. The pagans worshipped many false gods who were appeased by witchcraft and human sacrifice. Their ruler was a king named Liri, who was served by evil sorcerers known as druids. On Easter Eve of the year 433, 
the king, with his nobles, warriors, and druids, were gathered on the hill of Terra for an important royal feast. As the king prepared to light the ritual fire, gasps began to ripple throughout the assembly. The king looked in astonishment as the light of a distant fire burst into life. For it was by royal decree that upon pain of death, no fire was to be kindled until that which was lit by the king. The outraged king demanded to know who was defying his order. The archdruids had been forewarned through the use of demonic oracles of the coming of a powerful messenger. If this fire is not put out this night, they warned, then this fire and the one who lit it will overcome us all. Hearing this, the king became enraged. He assembled his chariots and with his followers raced to the hill of slain where the fire was burning. He summoned the violators to come to him at the bottom of the hill. The man who came down from atop the hill was named Patrick and he was dressed in priestly robes all of white. Knowing that this man was a Christian, the archdruid Lakru began to insult Patrick and blaspheme God. He summoned demonic powers and began to rise above Patrick. In the face of this evil, Patrick knelt and began to pray. At once the pagan druid was cast down from the air and broken upon the rocks. Then suddenly the ground began to shake, the soldiers began to tremble, and the horses began to panic. In confusion and fear, his forces fled, leaving the king alone to face Patrick. The terrified king knelt before Patrick and asked him to come to Terra the next day so as to deliver his message to the royal assembly. This show of power had seemed to humble the mighty king, but secretly the king's mind was plotting. He devised a plan in which Patrick's small band would be attacked along the road and never make it to Terra. Patrick, sensing this plot, appealed to God for his protection. The next morning, Patrick arose with a prayer. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me. This is part of the prayer known as St. Patrick's Breastplate, and he prayed it along the road to Terra. The soldiers hid in the forest along the roadside waiting to ambush and kill the Christians when they passed by. But as they approached, the Lord transformed them to appear as a group of deer in the eyes of the soldiers. Seeing only deer, the soldiers ignored them and let the Christians pass safely by. To his astonishment, King Leary saw the arrival of Patrick to his court. He then ordered his archdruid Lucknail to call upon the pagan gods to defeat Patrick. Lucknail approached Patrick and summoned an evil darkness to surround the hill and plain of Terra. The king and his followers began to gain confidence and challenged Patrick to command his god to remove the darkness. In humility, Patrick told the crowd that he could not command God. At this the crowd jeered, feeling now that they had won their victory. But this would not be their day, nor would another day be theirs hereafter in the land of Ireland. For Patrick raised his arms and prayed to the Lord, who that very minute answered his prayer. This time onward, Patrick was allowed to bring Christianity to all of Ireland. The people of Ireland broke free from the grip of paganism and were completely illuminated in the light of Christ. Wasn't that great? And this hot chocolate is pretty good too. So, now you know why the Irish loved St. Patrick. 
He spread the Catholic faith and the love of Jesus throughout Ireland, and many, many, many years later, the Irish brought their love of Christ with them to a new land. So on our pilgrimage in New York, we can see St. Patrick's Cathedral. After many years of construction, St. Patrick's Cathedral was opened in 1879. Can you imagine the excitement of all the people? During our pilgrimage, we can visit Our Lady's Chapel and see statues of great saints like St. Saint Francis Cabrini. While we are here, we are going to make a trip down to the crypt of St. Patrick's Cathedral. In the crypt of the cathedral are buried some of the bishops of New York City. But we are going to look for someone else. Have you ever heard of Pierre Toussaint? He is an, another immigrant in the United, to the United States. He came from a country called Haiti, and he has an amazing story. He isn't canonized yet, but he has been declared venerable, which means that he is well on his way. Let me tell you about Pierre. Pierre's story begins in Haiti. Pierre Toussaint was born a slave on a plantation in Haiti. Unlike many of the stories you may hear about slaves in America, Pierre considered himself to have a happy childhood. His master took good care of him and his family. His master, Jean Berard, and his family moved to New York when a war broke out in Haiti. Pierre came with the Berard family. Not long after the Berard family had settled in, Jean made sure Pierre was trained in a trade. Pierre learned how to style hair. He was very good at what he did, and all the New York women wanted their hair done by Pierre. This decision by Jean Berard saved his family, for when Jean died, Pierre supported Jean's widow. Pierre was finally freed by Marie Berard just before she died. Now that he was free, he finally could marry the woman he loved, Juliette Noel. Pierre and Juliet did many things for other Haitians and African Americans. They often took boys into their home from the street to help them find work, and they also helped support an orphanage. Everyone who knew Pierre loved him and considered him a saint. He could be seen going to daily mass and was great friends with the Irish pastor and the local parish. Pierre loved God very much and knew that he had been very blessed by him. It is now time for a quick break. But when we return, we will take a last look at the wonderful Catholic world we have around us in the Americas. Welcome back, kids. We received another postcard from Sister. I wonder what she has to say about her visit to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Let's see. Dear Sister and boys and girls, I am having fun here in the Big Apple. This morning, I went to St. Patrick's Cathedral to pray at the relics of the venerable Pierre Toussaint. It was very peaceful, even amidst the bustling city. While I was here in the crypt, I also prayed at the tomb of Bishop Fulton Sheen and of John Cardinal O'Connor. There were many other bishops there as well. These are some of my favorites. Yesterday, I went to visit St. Peter's Church on Barclay Street. This is the church Pierre Toussaint helped to rebuild during his lifetime. The original church is where St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was baptized. So many saints right here in our own midst. Who would be the next American saint? Love, Sister Mary Joseph. St. Patrick's Cathedral is a great place to go on pilgrimage. Venerable Pierre Toussaint is not the only American that is on the road to being declared a saint. Did you know there are already nine American saints? Maybe they lived and are buried near where you live. You can make a pilgrimage to see them and to bring with you all of your intentions. Before we take our Paradise Pop Quiz, I want to list all nine of the canonized American saints for you. Hopefully, someday we will all be a part of this list. First, there are three Jesuits who were martyred in New York State. They are Saints Isaac Jogues, René Goupil, and Jean Lalande. Then there is Saint Francis Cabrini, who founded many hospitals in America. 
she was sent by the Pope to help Italian immigrants. Her shrine is also in New York. Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton was the first American-born saint. She converted to Catholicism and founded a religious community after her husband died. You can visit her tomb in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Saint John Nauman was the fourth bishop of Philadelphia. Saint Rose Philippine Duchesne was a missionary in Missouri. She taught many of the Native Americans in the area. They called her woman who prays always. Saint Catherine Drexel also educated Native Americans and African Americans, this time in Pennsylvania. Saint Theodore Gurin was a missionary in South Indiana and founded many schools. She is the most recently canonized American saint. Look at all these places to which we can make a pilgrimage and give thanks to God for all of his many blessings. We have one more place I want to go. While we are in the area, why not head down to our nation's capital for a quick stop at the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception? When you go to Washington, D.C., you can stop at the Capitol, the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, and the War Memorials, but we can't forget to stop at the Basilica. The Basilica of the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception is beautiful. Did you know that it has more than 70 little chapels, each dedicated to Our Lady under a different title? America is a melting pot of many different nationalities, but no matter where we are all from, we bring our love for Our Lady with us. She is a queen no matter where we are. The Basilica is named the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception because it is under this title that she is the patroness of our country. Whew, we have had quite the pilgrimage. I think it is time for our Paradise Pop Quiz. Who did Our Lady appear to, leaving a miraculous image on his tilma to show the local bishop? Very good, Saint Juan Diego. Question number two. Who is the patron of New York's cathedral and also the patron of Ireland? Saint Patrick. Number three. Who was the Haitian immigrant who came to the United States as a slave and became a well-known hairdresser in New York and was known for his great charity. Venerable Pierre Toussaint. Number four, who is the patroness of the United States of America? Our Lady, under the title of the Immaculate Conception. Well, this was just a taste of the great places here in our own country and in our neighbors to which we can make a pilgrimage. Thank you for joining me today on Truth in the Heart. God bless you.